A root canal therapy is the procedure of removing dead infected tissue from the inside of a tooth, then attempting to clean, sterilize and fill the canal which runs down the center of the tooth. The dental profession call this saving a tooth. The first step is to drill a huge hole through the crown of the tooth. The pulp chamber is exposed and cleaned out to gain access to the top of the root canal. The canals are then scraped out using files of increasing diameter to remove dead tissue from the inside. In this process, some of the debris and bacteria will be forced through the end of the root into the surrounding bone. Further scraping and filing is done to widen and shape the canal for the final filling. The length of the canal is judged by taking an X-ray of the tooth with a file inside the canal. The difference in length is then calculated to estimate the correct root length. This is at best a good guess, as dentistry has still not found a way to measure the length of a root canal with precision. The next step is to try to sterilise the tooth. This is done initially by washing the inside of the tooth with hydrogen peroxide and sodium hypochlorite, the bleach used for cleaning dirty nappies. A concoction of medications is placed in the tooth and the tooth is sealed with a temporary filling. The most common medicaments used for this are camphor, phenol, menthol and formaldehyde. These have been used for over 100 years. This process is repeated until the tooth stops hurting. When the tooth is considered sterile, it is ready to fill. Slow setting cements are spun down the canals. Gutta perca points are inserted next. They're packed in tightly to try to completely seal the canal. Supposedly, this will stop bacteria from getting into the tooth and reinfecting it. A temporary filling is then placed in the crown of the tooth until the final restoration can be completed. To understand why root therapy may not be such a good idea, we need to understand the anatomy of a tooth and how it relates to the rest of the body. They're not just big chunks of calcified material. Teeth are a complex and integral part of the body. They have feelings. The enamel is the part of the tooth that we all know as the crown with which we eat, bite and smile. Dentine makes up the inside of the crown and the bulk of the root of the tooth. Down the centre of the root is an empty space known as the root canal. This canal opens at the end of the root, called the apex, deep in the jawbone. Through this opening enter the nerve fibres and blood vessels which bring nutrients to the tooth and take away the toxins. These contents of the canal are called the dental pulp, or in lay terms, the nerve of the tooth. Around the outside of the tooth is another slightly calcified tissue called cementum. It's very thin and its main function is to attach the tooth to the membrane that surrounds the root called the periodontal ligament. This ligament attaches the tooth to the bone and forms a fibrous seal to prevent infection tracking down the root. The tooth is surrounded by bone, which also has a rich blood and nerve supply and vast lymphatic drainage. Around the bone is the rest of the body. The dentine deserves closer inspection. Dentine makes up the bulk of a tooth. It's made of millions of tubes which run from the surface of the root canal to the enamel and the outer surface of the root. These dentine tubules contain tissue fluid and an extension of the cells which line the inside of the canal. There are 30 to 75,000 tubules per square millimetre of dentine. The bulk mass of any tooth is really a whole bunch of tubes packed tightly together. It's far from solid. Minute as they are, if you were to place the tubules of a single rooted tooth end to end, you would have three miles of tubing. All of the dentine tubules in the root communicate directly with the surrounding tissue. In other words, they communicate directly with the whole body. Each of these tubules is wide enough to contain eight bacteria in cross section. Billions of bacteria can live happily in such an environment. These bacteria will penetrate to the full depth of the dentinal tubules, right out to the edge of the tooth. Through the dentine also pass the accessory canals. They contain extensions of the dental pulp, which in reality is somewhat like the taproot of a tree, with branches that reach out to the surface of the root, communicating freely with the rest of the body.